Hello and welcome. You've been sent to prison for a crime you didn't commit. And as a soldier of fortune, you're going to find out how to leave. So, let's start our top six mojo style countdowns with number six, touching grass. So if you didn't know, your sentence time will count down if you're in the game or not in the game. So, step one, we're going to hold down the alt key and hit F4. Now I'm going to go outside, touch some grass, look at the scenery. Imagine this $1,000 ship that you just bought is now landing on the coast. Or perhaps go on YouTube, look at some funny humorous shorts, or from the Twitch community. Once your prison time has elapsed, come back into the game. Leave prison, as you're now a free citizen, as you have paid your crimes to society. Number 5. Oxygen not included. Now during your stay at prison, there will be a mission that pops up called Inmate Maintenance Opportunity. This mission will pay between 2,000 and 5,000 merits depending on the depth. Basically it gives you a route to take, either 1, 2 or 3, and a depth between 1 and 15. You head to that route, head down the depth and you will find an oxygen machine and the screen will be red meaning there's a blockage and you will activate the terminal which will clear the blockage and you will be rewarded merits for your good deed. And if you chain a couple of these, you'll be in no time. Number four, miney, miney, miney. Now you can also work off your time by mining gems. Uh, the gem nodes are located in each one of the routes, one, two, or three. Uh, you will find Aperite, Dolivine, and Had Knight. Uh, the greater depth you go, the more likely you are to find the kind of rare gems, which would be your Had Knight, then your Dolivine, and then the really common is the Aperite. Now, the, obviously the Had Knight has the higher value, it's 460 merits, Dolivine gives you 250 merits, and the Upright will give you 60 merits. Um, for every one merit, it gives you one second of time off your prison your stay. Now what these nodes look like, you have the Had Knight, which is a sort of pinky purpley colour, the Dolivine, which is a greenish colour, and then there's the Upright, which is a kind of bluey purpley colour. Then once you've finished mining whatever amount you want to mine, head back to the dispenser terminal. Uh, each route on dip one has one of these consoles, so it doesn't matter which route you go down, if you're on your way back, it's usually to the entrance to the depth two tunnel, you'll find the machine. Go up to the machine, it'll show you how many rocks you got, how many minutes you'll get at the top left, and then you just click deposit. Now be wary, there are people who want to steal your gems, so always be mindful of your surroundings. Number 3. The Loot Goblin. Behind the dispenser for handing in your gems is another dispenser. This is the Loot Contraband Terminal. So there are items in prison that if you hand into this terminal you will get merits. Now the current items that are flagged as contraband are Tiger Claw, Chef, Multi-Tool plus the attachment, Inmate Helmet and Inmate Undersuit. Now all these items have different merits that you shall get when handing them in. They also have different weight, so there might be items that you don't want to pick up. Now here I have a chart of all the items, uh, plus the ore that you can mine, just because of the weight value and the merits you get, so you'd have an idea of what stuff you want to look out for, and what stuff you do not want to pick up. For example, you wouldn't want to pick up an undersuit, it takes up a large amount of storage and you don't get a huge amount of merits per weight, so a lot of tiger claws would be good a lot of helmets would be bad. So these are the items you want to look for, the Tiger Claws, the Chevs and the Had Knight. I'll stick this in the description so if the item values change I will update for future viewing. Now how to get this contraband? Uh, in each route you go down the mine shafts you will encounter NPC prisoners. Uh, if you knock them out, go into their backpack, they will contain materials plus food and water but the food and water doesn't have any value to hand in to the contraband. Now, one tip, you would rather do it deeper into the mine. Once you go past about depth 7, you will lose comm signal um, and you can knock out the NPCs and not get battery charges uh, because if you get a battery charge, the charge is more time than you would get from anything they would be carrying loot-wise. So obviously you don't want to do it in a, a low depth where there's a comm connection. There's also the stash boxes. Uh, at the beginning of PTU it used to be little clumps of rocks which kind of makes sense, you'd hide it in rocks and whatnot. Uh, they've changed that to boxes. Um, they have given a reason for that that is temporary. Um, I think because there was issues interacting with the stuff in the rocks, you couldn't actually grab them. So they've gone with these boxes. So as you go down the, the 
corridors, look out for these boxes, or uh, in the future it might be back to rocks. So that is material that you'll be able to hand in as contraband. All right, number two, the Great Escape. Now in the central sort of hab area, where you uh, go into the mine shafts or to the exit elevators, there is a vent on one of the walls that has a touch panel. Um, you'd enter code. Uh, you get the code from the little office as you enter the mine shaft area. It's on the right here. And if you kind of look on that back wall, there will be a code. And then you put that code into the panel and it will shut down the, the vent spinning and you can get into the escape route, which is sort of abandoned tunnels and whatnot. Um, a lot of kind of parkouring and sort of platforming, jumping you'll have to do. I, I will stick the route. I will do the route at the end of the video because it's quite long. It's like five minutes uh, at the end of the video so that you can see how to get out. Now, just at the end of the escape route, there is a room that has two sets of code. Um, so take a note of them. Once we are outside, there is a garage near the escape vent area that you got out of. And there's one over at another vent area. So if the one nearest you is gone, you can try that one over there. Uh, you go over there, you enter the code, uh, hit the tick button first. Sometimes it can be a bit buggy. So just hit the confirm button, put the code in, open the ramp, open the door, and there should be an Ursa in there. And then you take that Ursa to the the outpost called Barton Flats Aid Shelter. And then once you're at the outpost, you'll be able to spawn a small ship. Assuming you have a small ship, um, and then you can just fly away, go off to SBK and like hack away your crime stat. Now alternately, if you have a teammate, once you get into this vent area, your teammate could fly into the vent, pick you up, jump into the ship, and then he could just go ahead and fly on out, um, and you would have to drive to the outpost. I should point out there is no compass in the Ursa, so to find the outpost, it is in this direction. And that's it. Obviously at the end I will do an escape route from beginning all the way to the end at the end of the video. And number one, yo, you need an out. Now this one is similar to the previous one. You will have to escape prison the exact same way, but there are some changes to it. Uh, you have to go deep into the mine to the area that you will not pick up the comma ray and you should get a mission like this. And basically this mission is it wants you to get a chip off a dead body in the prison. Now this dead body is not always in the exact same location. There are these little platforms and you will have to try and figure out how to get to those platforms, loot the body for the chip, and then get back down and continue on the escape route out of prison. And once you get out of prison, you're gonna grab the Ursa. There will be a mission marker for the location that you have to drive to. It is basically in the same direction that you would go to the outpost to spawn the ship. And once you arrived at the, the site, uh, there will be NPCs there. Um, thankfully, they do supply guns in the Ursa. So you can get, grab a gun, go outside and kill them. Or, you could just get in the passenger seat and use the gun on the vehicle and not risk getting killed. Um, so I would recommend using the Ursa guns and not the APS guns. Once you've cleared out those guys, head into the front part of the Cutlass Wreck. There will be this sort of satellite that you would slot the hacking, hacking chip that you acquired from the dead body in the prison. It will clear your crime stat. Then go back outside, jump in the cut list that was provided, and you have 50 minutes to leave the area. Now, to be noted, there are, on this and the previous escaping route, there is a mission that players can take to capture you, basically kill you. It's a fugitive mission, so there might be some PvP action. So be warned, that is a possibility. You might get hunted down. All right, and that is us. We are at an end here. That is roughly the six gameplay loops there is in prison on how to escape. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Dislike, give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment. Perhaps hit the subscribe button. But thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace out. While most correction facilities see their inmates as criminals, we understand that everyone has a story.